I just love worship. I just love what God is doing. Amen. And it's an awesome thing to come into the presence of God. Visitors, thank you for worshiping with us and being a part of what God is doing in our midst. Today, I am going to um, culminate or be at the end of the series that we've been in for a few weeks now, where we've been talking about the whole premise of seize the moment to bear fruit. I just have a couple of things I want to share on the back end of the message, and uh, we'll come together Wednesday and we can flesh that out and talk through that some more. So go with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 13. Um, you've heard this parable over and over again, and for the first three parts of this, or if you want the entire series, I want to encourage you to go to our podcast online, and you can download the whole thing. There's no cost for that, and you can just play it over and over and over again in your hearing so that God can move and have his way in our midst. If you're in Luke chapter 13, say amen. amen. Jump down to verse 6. I'm going to read verses 6 through 9, and then we're going to focus uh, for the next few moments on just the latter part of that. So Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9, then we're going to uh, allow God to speak in our midst. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let me read, and he told them this parable. I'm reading from the ESV. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and have found none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and put manure on it. Then it should bear fruit next year well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Verse eight again, 8 again, and he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and put manure, put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Um, before I go into the, the message, I need to repeat after me. Say, self, self. seize the, the moment to produce fruit. Now do me a favor and look at the person to your left first. Look at the person today. Say, tell them, person. Today the pastor is not preaching about you. He's talking about me. Yeah, now look at the other direction. Yeah, look at the other. Say, self, person. Today the pastor is not preaching about you. He's preaching about me. So point to yourself. Say, self. This is about me. So here's what I don't want you to do as we kind of get to the back end of this message. I don't want you to say, man, I wish they were here. Don't do that, okay? I don't want you to make up any excuse of anything that may have happened to you. I don't want you to make any excuse of anything that you can think of that could be different as we get to the end of this series. And I'm going to talk, talk quick because I just want to say two things on the back end. Um, I want you, just like I have to do, to focus on yourself individually and ask yourself, what adjustment do you need to make to get to productivity? Yeah. All right? Uh, come on, y'all. I want y'all to hear me. Say, what adjustment do I need to make individually to get to productivity? I'm learning, I'm, I'm learning to apply these principles even in my own home and in my leadership and in my own marriage, in my own academic life, that the majority of the problems that I encounter in life there is something in me that God is probably trying to work out in how I handle the situation. Because if the goal in my spiritual maturation or my spiritual maturity is to be like Christ, I can't think of anything that I do that really ticks God off that he leaves me. Did y'all hear that? He sticks with me through it all. Amen. And I think we need to learn to stick with each other through it all. I'm not saying that people won't have issues. Their issues should not be your issues. And their issues should not impact what you do and how God is moving in your midst. So um, to kind of get to where we are really quick, we've been talking about this particular fig tree that uh, God, the, who is the master in the text, came looking for fruit from this particular fig tree. Let me just paraphrase, and I'll get to the bottom of the text. Uh, for three years, he said, he's been coming looking for fruit on the fig tree, and he found none. And then... Um, 
here's what I said a couple of weeks, that, that barrenness is the prime or the dominant reason will, that will cause God to sever relationship with us. Now, I know this sounds extremely harsh, and a lot of you on Wednesday night have been saying, Preacher, are you saying that if I don't do anything for God that I can lose my salvation? And I sounded callous in my response in that I said, the bottom line is that God created you for more than we're doing, and he didn't save us just for the mere pleasure of being saved. He saved us to be called his Savior. So if God is speaking to you and you're volitionally or of your own volition avoiding him, then it raises the question, do you really know God? You kind of get what I'm saying? And so here's how I, I laid all this all out when I said um, in the Old Testament, God himself said, my word cannot return void but must accomplish that which I sent it to do. When God releases a word over your life and releases a word over my life, um, he, when God says, I need you to do, if we find ourselves disobeying God's word, then we must answer the question, do we really belong to him? Because John 10 still says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. So very, very important. If you're not bearing fruit, you might want to check to see if you're really connected to the vine. Okay? Here is how it says it in John 15, and I didn't come to talk about John 15. We did a lot of that. Um, he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me um, as the branch cannot bear fruit. How? By itself. And then he puts it this way. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit... He cuts it off and throws it into the fire to be burned. But every branch in me that does bear fruit, he prunes it that it may be what? More fruitful. Now, here's the problem with a lot of us. We've gone through a lot of things in life that have impeded our ability to produce fruit, and we're using those things as excuses for not producing fruit. The text still says if you don't produce fruit, you're going to be yeah, 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 yeah. So don't get caught off claiming you know God. <laughs> really, I, I want you all to hear me say that. So we're going to walk through this. I need to say a couple of things. So the, the thing about the text, three things real quick, is that this tree had no excuse for bearing fruit. Number one, because it was positioned in the right place for productivity or for production. It was planted in the vineyard. And if, if, if you know anything about God, uh, if we're in God's vineyard, we have no excuse because we are planted in the best place that we can possibly be planted. Are you with me? And so if you're not producing fruit right now, don't be guilty of the thing that this fruit tree did or this fig tree did, where secondly, it perpetuated its performance, meaning that three years, the, the, the man kept looking for fruit but they kept doing the same thing by not producing fruit. And then the third thing that the fig tree did was that it was sucking up nutrients but not returning anything. The nutrients were reserved for the grapevines that were planted in the vineyard, but this thing was positioning in a good place, and it had a whole lot of intake but no output. Does that make sense, guys? A lot of intake but no output. So the third year now, the vine dresser comes, and he says, you know what? cut this thing down. It's being unproductive. It's not producing what I need it to do. So why should it continue to use up the soil? Now, the latter part of the text, I really, really like the latter part of the text because then it says the vine dresser intervened and say, let it alone for one more year. Now, this is where I get excited because had Jesus not showed up and say to God, give that knuckleheaded boy one more year. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Don't act like it's just he needed that. You need it too. I told y'all this is not about who shouldn't be here or who's not here. This is about us individually. So I thank God for time. Anybody in here? Come on. Anybody else in here? Yeah, because you and I, we have done some things that are undeserving of the great. Come on now of the grace of God, and he hasn't cut us down yet and throw us into fire to be, oh, come on, I just need two saved individuals just to say hallelujah and to thank him this morning. Yeah, just, just, just anybody in here that know that it was not, but it not for the grace of God, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't be where we are. But it not for the grace of God, we wouldn't be breathing the air that we're breathing. Were it not for the grace of God, we won't have the jobs that we have. Were it not for the grace of God, we won't be living in the places where we live in. Come on, come on, come on. Don't fool yourself 
into thinking it's your skill set or your ability or your money or your intellect or your goodness. Come on, don't make that, don't make that mistake this morning. Were it not for the grace of God. So he allows us more time. He allows us more time. He allows us more time. But I think even in the time, myself inclusive, is that we are not as productive as we should be. So let me read verse 8. Go to verse 8 again. Let me read that. And then we're going to read these two verses. Then we'll talk about it. Uh, I just have a brief word I want to share. That he would have his way. Sir, he answered, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and I put manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can do out with it. You can do out with it. Now, here is how I define fruit. Let me just read this definition, then I'm going to walk through what I want to walk through. Fruit um, has to do with us realizing our created purposes on earth and then living the lives that God created us to live, seizing the moments of God, turning those into movements, and then working on mission with God in the earth. Okay, very, very important. Let me read it one more time. Fruit has to do with us realizing our created purposes on the earth, then living the lives God created us to live, seizing the moments of God, turning them into moment, uh, movements, and working on mission uh, with God in the earth. Let me, let me read this. Let me just say this, and then I'm going to move into the two things I want to share with you because somebody's not understanding my definition. Um, let me put it to you this way. God created Moses for the sole purpose, this is Felix speaking, of delivering the Israelites from Egypt. Everybody okay with me? Okay. Now, 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 now. Even though Moses spent time in prosperity in Pharaoh's house as a young person, Moses was not created for prosperity. Okay. Now, now, up in Pharaoh's house, Moses had it flat going on. He had chariots with some 20s on there, gold rims, horses with gold teeth. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this brother had it going on. He had it going on. He had it going on. But, but what I want you to understand, prosperity was not God's divine intention for allowing Moses to enter the earth realm. I need to say that because some of us are serving God to get rich. <laughs> I need to say that. Are you with me? I, I want you all to hear me say this. And this is going to sound so blasphemous to a lot of us this morning, but you don't need God to get rich. You just need a good job and manage your money well. Are you with me? And the same principles that are working for Oprah and the, 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 the millionaires of the world can work for us. Our problem is we get a little something, something, and because we don't do it right, we give the little something, something away. But you're not created for that. You're created for the purposes of God. So watch this. God had to create a calamity, a crisis in Moses' life to press him to destiny. Okay, now let me, let me say this. Hey, for 40 years, Moses, I've been looking for fruit, and it's not fruit yet because the time wasn't right. So God allowed Moses' this worst nightmare to happen, to press him to the wilderness so God could, no, let me, let me say it like I'm going to talk about today. So Moses could make the adjustment so he can be on mission with God. Okay, so just like Moses, just like Joseph, just like Abraham, just like Jonah, just like all the patriarchs, just like Paul, just like Jesus, just like John the Baptist. I want you all to hear me. Just like Matthew, just like Mark, just like Bartholomew, just like Andrew, just like Thaddeus, just like all the biblical character, there is divine intention attached to your creation. So here's how he says it in the New Testament. Before I formed you, I knew you. So by virtue of the fact that we, we entered the earth realm, we exist as a solution to something that God sees wrong in the earth, and he sent you and me here to fix it. Y'all all right with me? So for three years, he's been looking for fruit. And yet and still, there is no fruit. So... The vine dresser said, leave it alone for three years, and then he makes a statement, I will dig around it, and I will fertilize it. And then a couple of weeks ago, I said to you all, 
the ending of that text is not in the um, original Greek language. So in other words, I'm going to dig, I'm going to fertilize. The end is going to be your business. So hear me, hear me carefully. Don't miss this. The request for time was not so the tree could be productive. Say that before I say the next statement. The request for time was not for the tree to be productive. One more time. These, they're going to say amen over here. <laughs> the request for time, y'all don't make me look bad, was not for the tree to be productive. Amen. Jesus saved people. Amen. <laughs> the request for time, listen to this, was so the tree can make the adjustment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if the tree adjusted, listen to this carefully, then God could use the tree however he wanted. He can make it produce fruit, or he can make it not produce fruit. That wasn't the issue as long as the tree made the adjustment. So listen to how I'm going to say this. We're called to become before we're called to do. Yeah, we're called to become like God before we start doing for God. If I do for God before I become like God, I'm going to reproduce myself. Let me tell you how this looked like in ministry. That's why it's so easy for a bunch of hurt folk to huddle together and talk about the leadership of the church. You weren't doing out of a character of God when you got hurt. You were doing it out of your own character, and you replicated yourself. So as opposed to going to God for healing, you go to other folk. Cause so the call is to become before we start to do. Are you tracking with me? So I'm going to be brief. So here's what he said. Leave it alone this year also, meaning one more year which is symbolic of just give me time to work on the tree to make the adjustments, the necessary adjustments, so that the tree can be fully available to be used by you. Are you guys hearing me this morning? So he says two things. I'm going to dig around it, and then I'm going to fertilize it. You guys are tracking with me, okay? Number one, say he's going to dig around it, and then he's going to fertilize it. One more time, say so he's going to dig around it, and then he's going to fertilize it. Give me a quick second to deal with the verb dig. Now, I, I, I'm, just, I'm going to try to be as elementary and as, 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 as simple as I can so you can hear this. Swindoll, God needs to, to, to tear you up, tear us up before he can use us. Because he wants to take out of us what's not like him to put himself in us so we can replicate him. Okay? That requires digging and fertilizing. My problem is because I don't like God's process, I abort the process. Are you with me? And I blame the vehicle that God is using to dig and fertilize And if I'm super spiritual, I'll blame the devil. Are you with me? Come on, I want you all to hear me. Let, me. let me give you an ultimate example, and I know none of us are here. Job got some digging done on him. Come on, y'all. Ain't nobody in here been dug like Job's been dug. I'm going to talk about that in a little while. But in all the digging and fertilizing that Job experienced, he says, though he slay me, yet will I what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job had some friends, just like we have church member friends. Girl, you ought to leave that church. You ought to leave him. You ought to leave that. You ought to leave the situation. And we abort the process, and then years later, we find ourselves still having to be dug and fertilized all over again because we didn't stick it out so God can work out of us what he wants done. Does this make sense? Okay, so, so repeat after me. Say, God, do some digging on me. And let me say this up. I say, God, God fertilize, me. fertilize me. Okay, now one more time. Say, God, God 
do some digging on me and say, God, fertilize me. Those are the two things I want us to hear um, because if you lock into these principles, your home's going to be better, your marriage is going to be better, your ministry is going to be better, you're going to be better at the job, and you're going to be amazed at how God is going to use you because we're okay going through what God needs to take us through, and we won't fight to try to win. Okay? Now, now let me say this this way. That verb dig is a very, very interesting verb. And I need the time to work that out so we can understand this. Now, here's what I need you to understand. The conversation in the text was never between God and the fig tree. Everybody okay with that? Nowhere in here do we see him going to the fig tree and saying, fig tree, this is what you got to do. Blah, 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 blah. And the fig tree's talking back. The fig tree is, is silent. The fig tree has no role. Come on, I want y'all to see me. It's just God speaking to the vine dresser about this thing that ought to produce fruit. The reason I need to point that out, because there's something in you that ought to produce fruit. But before the thing can get to producing fruit, God needs to deal with you, not the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got to deal with you, not the thing, okay? And here's what we say. Let me just go here since we're in church. I'm not going to use my gift. I'm not going to do my. Now, God ain't worried about the gift. He, he, he's worried about you because if you're right, you'll realize the gift doesn't belong to you know how. I wish I had somebody in here. You'd realize that the thing that's supposed to bear fruit has nothing to do with you. It's a gift from God. So God has to get us right so he can get to what's in us. So here's what he says with the verb. Number one, I'm going to dig. Come on, say it's a singular verb. Singular. Say it again. Say it's a singular verb. Singular. Let me tell you what that means. Singular means, and if I'm talking about me, it's not Katani's role to fix me because then if it's her and me, then it just became plural. And I invited an unauthorized person into my situation to dig on me. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. I'm your pastor. Don't invite me into your foolishness. Let me help you. 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 This is what we do in church. The pastor hurt me, so I'm going to leave. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. That might be true, okay? But you got to do your own digging to be big enough to come and say, Pastor, you hurt me. Because here's what we do. We leave the church and expect the pastor to know that we're hurt. So, Annette, you got to do your own digging. Are you with me? Well, both of y'all, two of y'all named Annette, one with hat, one without. Both of y'all say, I got to do my own digging. Robert, you can't dig on her. She's got to do her own digging. Are you with me? Because when she do her digging, when she does her digging, this is a singular verb. I'm belaboring the point. When she does her own digging, the marriage is going to be right. I'm not saying your marriage is jack out. I'm not putting your business out there because you got a perfect marriage. you got a tie that matches her dress. That's <laughs> Y'all good, okay? So that's, that's a good marriage. Amen. That's a good, that's a good marriage. Yeah. <laughs> They're they, they cute, okay? So say self. I, I'm, I need to do my own digging. Okay. It's a singular verb written in the active voice. Let me tell you what that means, okay? The active voice means that the subject is responsible for the action of the verb. I want y'all to hear me say this, okay? It is not a passive voice, which means that the subject sits there innocently and allows something external to the subject to do the work. The active voice says that I need to take the initiatory role to get something to happen. So here, this is going to sound so blasphemous because here's what we do. We try to invoke what I'm going to call grammatically the divine passive in our situation. What, this is what the divine passive is. The divine passive is, is if I'm sitting here and I need to be worked on, I just sit here and pray to God, and God comes and work on me, and I passively sit here, and I am a recipient of the work of God. The active voice says, God's telling me, get your lazy behind up and get involved and do something. I wish I had somebody in here about the situation. That's what the active voice says. Let me help y'all with the active voice. The active voice is like this. If we're playing a game of baseball, and I get put in the game, and I have the bat, and the pitcher throws the ball, and I hit the ball, the active voice says, the boy 
hit the ball. Everybody okay with me? Okay. The ball, the ball didn't hit the bat. If the ball hit the bat, the boy was passively standing there, and the pitcher threw the ball, threw the ball, and it hit the bat. Are you with me? But if it says the boy hit the ball, then the boy actively kept his eyes on that ball, and when it came, he swung at it. Are you with me? And he hit the ball. The problem with a lot of us in Christianity is we're looking at the enemy throwing and we're saying the enemy hit me. No, 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 no. The active voice says, I wish I had somebody on here. You ought to take some initiative, resist him, and he will what? Yeah, I want y'all to, y'all know this. Come on, come on. Christianity is an active faith. We're not supposed to stand passively and allow stuff to happen. Take the initiative. That's the active voice. I hit. I don't wait to get hit. Come on, talk to me this morning. I fix. I don't wait to be fixed on. I need somebody to hear me this morning. I take the initiative in the active voice to get it right. Been sitting passively too long. It gets gooder. It's in the heiress tense. I love the heiress. Here's what the heiress says. There is no reference to time on when the action occurs. Okay. I'm telling you, this is good, this is good. Because this is what we do. We get in the voice actively, and we get a couple of hits, and then we say, I'm done. God has fixed me. <laughs> or, better yet, how long is it going to take for him to get it right? How long is it going to take? It's been four years. It ought to be right by now. The heiress then says, time is not your business. <laughs> That's what the heiress then says. I'm going to put this together in a little while. So if it says, allow me time to dig and fertilize, I'm just going to keep digging and fertilizing and digging and fertilizing and digging and fertilizing and digging and fertilizing and digging and fertilizing. Matter of fact, when you come back a year from now, guess what I'm going to be doing? Digging and, yeah, 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 digging and, and fertilizing and digging and fertilizing. That's, so you, 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 got, you got the singular person, you've got the active voice, you've got the aorist tense. Here's what the subjunctive mood said. Now, subjunctive, say subjunctive. subjunctive. And y'all probably like, what in the world? Don't, don't get lost on it. Here's what the subjunctive said. The subjunctive is the mood of possibility or probability, meaning this, that the likelihood ex exists in this verb that if this guy does not dig, the, tr the, the, the um, situation with the fig tree will never change, right? That's the subjunctive. If he doesn't dig, the tree will never change. Here's what probability says. If he starts digging, the likelihood of the tree changing, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the subjunctive. You kind of see the important of Greek grammar? So let me put this together. So here's what it looks like. If I stay on the sideline and the coach says, get in the game, dude, and, and, and actively start swinging on the ball, the goal of getting in the game, even though humanistically speaking, we want to get a hit, the heiress voice says, you might be swinging a long time before you get a hit. I wish I had, I wish I had somebody in here. But the subjunctive move says, as long as you stay in the game and keep swinging, the likelihood of you, I wish I had somebody in here, the likelihood of you getting a hit exists. The problem with a lot of us is we've been hurt and passively we're sitting here praying, God, you got to heal me. God, you got to fix me. God is saying, get in the game and pick up your bat and start to swing. Come on, I want y'all to hear me. And as you're swinging, the probability of you hitting that ball exists. Amen. Amen. But man, we don't get that. We want to hang out in our pain. We want to hang out in our stuff. We want to hang out in our whatever we call it and remain to be unproductive. Y'all, digging doesn't feel good. Can I say that? 
it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel good. Because here, here, here's what digging does. Um, you're very familiar every year when it comes time, when the spring season approaches, most people with beautiful grass go out and they get what's called an aerator. Did I say that right? Yeah. And what the aerator does is it goes over the ground and it plucks holes in the ground and it makes the ground fertile. And if there's a rock, you go there and you pick up the rock and move it out the way or it might break those hard places up in the ground such that the ground is pliable enough so you can put a seed in the ground and once the seed makes it in the ground, the ground then is positioned for rain to come so growth can happen. So what digging does is it breaks up those hard places. Come on. It breaks up those difficult places in our life. It breaks up the things that we can't let go of. And the reason a lot of us can't get the fruit is we we don't want nobody digging on us. And the beauty of the text in the active voice is this. Don't be so prideful as not to dig on your own self. Oh, I need two witnesses in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's what that looks like. Be honest with yourself saying, I've got a callous heart. I've got a hard heart. I am the knucklehead. I'm the one that don't want to deal with you. I'm, come on, come on, come on. And begin the process of digging up those hard places. I want y'all to hear me. So, so that the ground is pliable for seed to go in. The reason a lot of us can't make progress in life, ministry, work, wherever, it's not so much the situation, it's us. We don't know how to transcend the situation to be used by God. Right. Digging does not feel good. Does yeah. not feel good. Ask Job. Forget Job. Ask me. <laughs> I can tell you all some stuff. Digging is embarrassing. Oh, come on, y'all. It, it kills pride. It puts your business out there. Because everybody, walk by, ooh, there's a rock. Ooh, that thing been in there? Lord Jesus. And the world sees what comes out of you. I, I, everybody sees. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But it makes you become before you start doing. Are you with me? You've got to get all the rocks out. You've got to get all the difficult stuff. You've got to get the hard stuff out so, so we can become like God. That's what digging does. So he says, give me a year to dig, and then he puts this funny thing on it, and fertilize. Now, the striking thing for me about fertilization is, is where I'm from, we can't afford to go to Home Depot to buy prefabricated manure. So here's what we do. We go to the cow pasture. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all from Denver. <laughs> Ain't no cows in Denver. Well, y'all from the country, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but here's what you do. I mean, in America, they make it so cute. We pick up cow chips. No, I ain't no cow chips. No. It's dung, yeah. Don't let me tell you how to really spell it, but I'm going to stay holy. But, you know, <laughs> you go, yeah, you, 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 you pick that up. And then it's cool until you pick it up. Because sometimes the top gets baked over and it looks good. Come on, y'all. And then all of a sudden, the moment you pick it up, here's what you go, Lord Jesus. Yeah, because it starts to stink and it starts to smell bad. And the reason a lot of us don't want to be dug on is because we know some stinky stuff is going to, come on, come on, come on, come on. Some manure, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and we don't want people smelling us because we want to look prideful. We're trying to protect name. We're trying to protect image. But for you to get the fruit, you've got to stink a little bit. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm smelling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. God has to work some things out. He has to work some things out. So he has to dig. He has to fertilize. And, and here's the thing. It's between him and you and nobody else. 
I need you to hear me say that. We can be productive in life. We can be fruitful in ministry. We can get to the place where God is seeing results. But the reason he's not seeing results is because of us. Because of me. Because of the crazy stuff that I go through. So here's what he says. Leave it alone for one more year. I'm going to dig and I'm going to fertilize. And then he says, if at the end of that time uh, it produces fruit, that's your business. So, so listen to me carefully, church, and I'm done. Don't be so quick to try to fix things. You make the adjustment. I'm going to close with this story. Katani and I have been married. Y'all, if you've been here around, you've heard it along, uh, a lot. Um, 34 years this year. Yeah, somebody say, wow, I ain't even that old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told y'all a long time, a lot of time, 16 of those years were not cute. They were just ugly stuff, and, 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 and she's perfect. I'm jacked up. It's Mother's Day, so I have to say it that way. Um, <laughs> and, and, but but here, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, she spent a lot of time praying for me to get it right. Passive, 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 passive. Sick him, God. Sick him, God. Sick him, God. Sick him, God. Passive. And God said, no, I want to sick you. This is striking. Now, in my mind, she ain't doing nothing wrong other than getting on my nerves. She's a perfect woman. I want y'all to hear me. I mean, seriously, she's not doing nothing crazy, not sinning, not doing none of that kind of stuff. Well, I don't know about that, but she's being all right. <laughs> I need you to hear me say, I'm the problem in the relationship. I'm the problem in the relationship, right? God gets a hold of her. And he does some digging and fertilizing in her, and she makes the adjustment, and she leaves me alone. And so now she's getting to the part where she's producing fruit. I got attitude, or oh, now you holy. <laughs> oh, okay, you praying three times a day. Okay. You, now you... you Stop the arm. Now you're listening to worship music. What's up with that? You can't wait till Sunday? You know? <laughs> and she just leaves me alone. But God had worked on her to turn her into a worshiper so she can produce fruit. Watch this. My jealousy of the God in her began the transformation in my life. I'm using the marital example because I want us to understand if we stop trying to fix each other. Marriage is on the rocks, but I'm getting the best, best meals. Y'all not hearing me. Marriage is on the rock and, and, and the house is being cared for. Marriage is on the rock and I can't tell what else was good. Um, but you know, <laughs> everything's going all right. Marriage is, I want y'all to hear me. Marriage is on the rocks. No, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. But because she adjusted to God, here's what I'm saying. What's wrong with you? And oh, it's nothing wrong with me. I just found God. You, you kind of get, and she quit trying to dig and fertilize in my life because in the active sense, she saw what God was trying to do in her and quit trying to invite me into her stuff. And then God did a work in me. I'm telling y'all it works. I'm telling y'all it works. I'm telling you it works. Pick a person you can't stand and invite them to dinner. <laughs> y'all look at me like, now preach you done gone too far. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm done. Listen to this. Listen to this. God sat on his throne in glory and watched us in the earth realm doing him wrong. Watch what he did. He gave us the best meals, the best homes, the best love. He died on Calvary to show, come on, come on, while we were yet, yeah, you know the text. And because of how he loved us, we adjusted towards him. 1 John 4, 7, 8, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. 
If you're waiting for that person to come and ask for forgiveness, you could potentially be waiting a really, really long time. And it will impede your productivity. If you're in a marital relationship and you're waiting for the husband to get it right, you could potentially be waiting a very, very long time. I want you all to hear me what I'm saying, okay? This is about you. It's, it's not about the other person. If you were hurt from a church and you're still waiting for that pastor or deacon or whoever to come, you might be waiting a very, very long time. Yeah, I want y'all to hear me say it. God is saying, allow one more year for digging and fertilizing, and then fruitfulness will be begun. As we give ear to the word of God, God will speak, and we will start listening, and we will start doing. The issue is not that God is not speaking. We're choosing not to listen, and we're refusing to do. I'm done. Fruitfulness is being obedient to the voice of God in your life. In your life. I'm not saying don't pray for others. Please do not leave out of here saying that. But hearing begins here. And as it begins here, we'll be able to transfer that love onto somebody else. And we will get to productivity. The problem with the church, we're so busy inspecting others. Fruit inspectors. <laughs> that we're not digging and fertilizing in our own life. Here's what I want to ask you this Mother's Day morning. Come on, worship team. Where in your life is God calling for adjustment? And what are we going to do about it? Where in your life? Where in your life is God calling for adjustment? And what are we going to do about it? So I need you to bow your heads. I need you to search your hearts. I need you to bow your heads. And everybody just look internally. God, what are you saying to me, God? There are these moments, and we're in a moment, where you want us to seize the moment to turn it into a movement so we can be on mission with you. And we're impeding mission because we're missing the moments. This is a moment that you're calling to transition into a movement to get to fruitfulness. <sighs> so God speak. God speak. Can we do that um, with you guys, Holy Spirit? Yeah, can we just process that? There was a point in the worship experience today, well, all of it, but there's a point where Ms. Marcus said, let's just stop and be silent and, and hear God. I think we're at that place again in our worship experience. But the approach I would like for us to take this morning is to say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Flood this place, fill the atmosphere, God, but most of all, me, dwell on me. Speak to me, convict me, purge me, work in me, form me, transform me, make me a better husband, make me a better wife, make me a better minister, make me a different employee. God, work on me. Put on blinders, God, so I, I am not such a fruit inspector. I am not looking at others at what they're doing while I am impeding my own productivity. Help me to make the adjustments, God. Work in me, God. 